All right. Uh, if I if I talk like this, can everybody hear well at the back? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, are we good to get started? Excellent. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our workshop. My name is uh, Geraldine. Um, I'm from the Broad Institute, and I'm joined by my colleagues Banu and Andre. Uh, and we are going to spend uh, four days with most of you. Uh, on this JTK workshop. First, I'd like a, a little show of hands of who is here for the entire four days. Okay, uh, wonderful. Who is here just for today? Okay, a few people. All right. So the way we've designed this is that the first day, today we're going to mostly talk about introductory topics um, to get everybody on the same page, to give an overview of everything that's involved in uh, variant discovery and genomics. Um, and then the next few days will go much more uh, into detail. So I'll start by giving you a little introduction of the workshop. And after that, we'll really get going. Okay. So we're here to talk about genomics with GATK. GATK stands for Genome Analysis Toolkit. And it's a toolkit that we developed at the Broad Institute for uh, variant discovery. It's a toolkit that includes a lot of functionality. Uh, many of you may know it's mainly for uh, germline variant calling, but we're actually uh, capable of doing a lot more than that. Um, so we are going to uh, talk about the, the major capabilities, uh, the major analysis pipelines that uh, use GATK over the course of the next few days. Um, and specifically, we're going to be talking about what you can do with GHK version 4 and later. So GHK has existed for hmm, since about 2010. Uh, so it's been almost 10 years at this point and it has evolved enormously. Um, more recently, about uh, two years ago, we started rewriting GATK to be faster, to kind of meet the challenges of uh, genomics. Um, as we expand the amount of data that's being produced, we found that we needed to uh, make the tools faster and more efficient and more flexible in terms of enabling more types of analyses. Um, and so the software was completely rewritten uh, a few years ago. and We released uh, GATK version four last year. Um, it's fully open source under a BSD license, so you're more than welcome to use it for your own purposes, uh, to also use it for development and to redistribute it as well. Okay. Yes, and so one of the things that we'll talk a lot about are these best practices workflows. Um, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different tools in GATK and you can do a lot of different things with them. We have some specific workflows that are formulated for particular use cases where you string the tools together in a particular order um, to get the best results possible out of your data for those particular use cases. And that's what we call the best practices workflows. And that is what most of our workshop is going to be focused on. Okay. So we have these uh, best practices workflows for all the major variant classes. And we'll talk a lot more, we'll give you a, for those who are kind of new to the domain, we'll have an introduction to variant discovery and what are the different types of variants, what are the properties and so on. Um, but just to give you an, an overview, we have workflows that enable you to do analysis for the main variant classes in GATK. Uh, the status is that for uh, short variants, so SNPs and indels, um, as well as copy number, we have fully validated production-worthy workflows for both germline and somatic um, variant analysis. Uh, structural variation is something we still have in development, so there is um, a beta version of a structural variation um, workflow for germline, and we have an equivalent plan for the somatic structural variants, but that's a little bit further on the roadmap. Okay. 
Now, uh, we've released a version, and this is for people who might already be using uh, GHK. We released a major update, uh, 4.1, in uh, January of this year. And so if you have previously been using the software and you just want to know what's new in version 4.1, there is a series of blog posts uh, that Banu here coordinated, actually, um, that describes the major advances in each of the each of the particular use cases um, that were released in GTK 4.1, so we encourage you to uh, check that out on the blog, and you can find it by going to this convenient uh, short URL right here. Okay. Um, we provide full pipelines, uh, pipeline scripts for all of our best practices workflows. We provide that in GitHub. So um, you can get the full pipeline scripts from this GitHub repository. It's not the main GHK uh, repository. It's a separate one where we manage the public versions of the workflows. And these are, uh, for the most part, the workflows that we actually run in production at the Broad Institute. Um, one of the things that we're going to cover in the workshop is a cloud platform that is called Terra that we use for running workflows at scale. Uh, and we'll show you how to use it. This diagram may look a little complicated. The nice thing is basically this is a system that allows you to run the GTK workflows on cloud in a very scalable uh, way, but you don't have to worry about any of this. Um, it all happens behind the scenes. And during the workshop, we'll actually walk you through how that works. We'll show you how to use it uh, if you're interested. Now, many of you may already have access to compute resources and may not ultimately use Terra for your own purposes, um, but it is the platform that we use to provide fully working examples of the GTK workflows. And so we encourage you to check it out um, because that's, it's kind of the best way for you to see our pipelines. Every time we have a new version, you can see it in action. Um, so you can try out the pipelines before having to install it uh, on your own systems. Or you can also adapt the, adopt the platform for your own use, for your own uh, research, if you find that it suits you. Um, during this workshop, we'll actually do all the practicals, uh, all the hands-on portions. Um, we'll do in uh, Terra. So for the next few days, those of you who the majority uh, who are sticking with us uh, will be using this platform, getting to know how to use it. All right. Um, we provide, as I mentioned, this is kind of our uh, preferred platform for providing the pipelines. And so we have, so the platform has this concept of workspaces um, that allow us to tie together data um, methods within a single environment. And that allows you to, to actually run things. And so for each of the major workflows, we provide a, an example workspace where the pipeline is set up with appropriate input data and where you can actually use to uh, try it out. So we'll show you in action what that looks like uh, during the workshop. So to get started, um, as I mentioned when I, uh, earlier, we're going to start today with introductions to everything, uh, just so everybody's on the same page with regard to um, what sequenced data looks like, uh, how do we process it, what are the main concepts involved in variant calling? What are the main tools and steps uh, for each of the major use cases? So the bulk of that will be this morning. Um, this afternoon, we'll talk a little bit about the pipelining options, uh, pipelining platforms, and we'll introduce you to uh, the language that we use to write the pipeline scripts. Uh, and we'll also have a case study showing you kind of an end-to-end -end analysis of a study that we reproduced um, to show you what the logic is of how do you actually implement variant analysis for real research question. So that's going to be today. Uh, tomorrow, 
we'll focus, we'll do a more deep dive into the methods involved in ger germline variant calling. So tomorrow morning, we'll uh, look at how the variant caller actually works in, in quite a lot of detail. And in the afternoon, we'll talk about how we filter and evaluate the variants that we produce. Uh, day three, which is Thursday, uh, we'll do the same thing, but for somatic short variants. So we'll look at uh, somatic short variants in the morning. We'll look at somatic copy number in the afternoon. Uh, and then finally on day four, uh, we'll have, we'll go into deeper detail into how you actually write and uh, execute pipelines. Uh, and in the afternoon, we'll do a sort of a mini hackathon where you'll get to actually do some, uh, do some analysis in a very hands-on way. Uh, throughout the three practical days, day two, three, and four, uh, we'll intermix lectures with uh, with hands-on tutorials where you'll do exercises, actually get to run the tools, um, so that you have a very practical um, application of what you just learned in each uh, lecture. Today, though, it'll be entirely lecture-based um, so that we can uh, talk through all the introductory material. Are there any questions at this point? Everybody can, can hear well, even in the back? Okay, uh, this is a good room for this. <laughs> okay, uh, one more note is that um, please interrupt us at any point. We are here to communicate as much as possible to you. Uh, we are happy to answer questions as we go. So if there's something you don't understand, you're not really clear on, um, don't wait too long, raise your hands, uh, we'll talk through what's, what's uh, troubling you. Um, in some cases, if your question is super detailed, super specific, uh, we might put it in the parking lot and say, let's talk about that during the coffee break or something like that, if it's likely to be something that only really affects you and, and not the rest of the room. Um, but in general, just don't hesitate to raise your hand and um, bring up any topic that is uh, on your mind. We're gonna spend four days together. Uh, we'll get to know each other a lot. Uh, don't hesitate, we're really here just to make sure that you have everything you need to use our tools effectively. All right, okay, thank you. All right, so next up, Andre is going to give you an intro to sequencing data. We're going to talk about uh, everything involved in uh, sequencing and processing that data.